Stones, plums, crown jewels, testicles, balls. These are the topic of discussion today. And I'm afraid this time around, size does matter. In at least one of my vlogs, we have done a ball breeding soundness examination, also known as a BBSE. And you will notice one of the first things we do is measure the scrotal circumference of the ball being examined. Perhaps unsurprisingly, that circumference is positively correlated with that ball's fertility. So the bigger the scrotal circumference, the more fertile he is. And that's in a number of different ways. Increased daily sperm production, increased epididymal sperm reserves, the epididymis being the tube between the testicle and the urethra, essentially a holding pen where sperm matures, and a higher percentage of those sperm have a normal morphology as opposed to an abnormal morphology, which means they are more likely to work once they get to where they're designed to go. So, a greater quantity of semen and a greater quality of sperm. To achieve a high percentage of cows in calf, and critically, a high percentage of those calving within the first three weeks, we need a stock ball to be packing a real punch. Both of those are KPIs which are fundamental to the profitability of a suckler cow enterprise. What's more, if you breed your own bulls or you breed bulls to sell, scrotal circumference is relatively heritable at about 0.5 or 50%, meaning genetics seems to be responsible for about half of the variation we see. So this trait responds pretty quickly to selection, especially compared to some others, and you can breed up more fertile balls pretty quickly. As I said, for a BBSC, we measure scrotal circumference and we compare it to a minimum threshold. Normally that varies slightly according to age and sometimes according to breed. It's worth remembering that scrotal circumference is correlated with body weight, so a little bit of judgment comes into this as well. And it's why if purebred bulls are being measured, normally it is at a standard age or weight. You'll also notice for a lot of breeds, at least in the UK, bulls presented at society sales, again, need to have a minimum scrotal circumference. It's also why if you're dealing with a breed that uses EBVs or EPDs, if you're a North American, you'll find a scrotal circumference EBV. So whether we're talking on a purely commercial basis or a pedigree basis or anywhere in between, there are good reasons to monitor and maintain good scrotal circumference in your stock bulls. Don't get me wrong, as with any single trait, we can't let it become the only one that determines selection. And it seems reasonable that at some point there will be an optimum scrotal circumference whereby bulls are perfectly capable of getting a good number of cows in calf in a compact bulling. That's perhaps what we should aim for rather than just relentlessly selecting for bigger scrotums. But what about female fertility? We know bulls with a large scrotal circumference have heifer sisters and also daughters that tend to reach puberty earlier. As we know, another KPI for most beef and dairy herds is age at first calving. For most, the target will be 24 months or two years. We're still in a position where a lot of herds in the UK are calving at two and a half and three. If we're struggling because heifers aren't coming cycling quick enough, potentially selecting for higher scrotal circumferences could be a means of generating earlier puberty in replacement heifers. But although we know it results in earlier puberty, there doesn't seem to be any evidence to suggest that heifer pregnancy rates, which is really the proof of the pudding, are any higher when heifers are sired from these large scrotal circumference bulls. So based on the literature, heifers come into puberty earlier, but that doesn't seem to affect their pregnancy rate when they come to BPD. Nonetheless, the relationship between scrotal circumference and male fertility traits, both in their own bull and his male offspring, means it is a trait that anyone who uses natural service should still bear in mind. That's it for this one. If you enjoyed that, don't be afraid to click subscribe, ring the little bell next to it. That means when a new video comes out, you get a little notification. Give the video a thumbs up and leave me a comment. I'll see you next time.